Hey guys, we're coming back at you from Lake Barkley. We launched out of Katawa. We have run down river and I have picked up Mr. Kevin Bean. And we are gonna do a different show this time. Here it is the 1st of October and we ain't fishing for crappie. What are we fishing for, Kevin? Shell crackers. Shell crackers, them, there we go. Them big red ears. Big old red ear. I have been jacked about this ever since me and Kevin first talked about it because October, red ear fishing? Who does that? Nobody. 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 They only fish for them when they can find the beds just off of the bluegill beds. And then you just throw a drop shot and reel a night crawler, red worm, whatever through there and try to aggravate them and get them to bite. But I've never been able to catch them this time of year. And Kevin here is gonna show us how to put them on the hook today. It's gonna to be fun and it's gonna be exciting. So y'all hang on. <laughs> hang on, here we go. I've spent most of my life chasing. Chasing success, chasing money, chasing respect. Truth is, nothing has brought me joy like being right here on the water. Rod in hand, hook on the line, chasing crappie. I am a crappie angler. These are our stories, and this is On The Hook. You like uh, night crawlers better than red worm? I like night crawlers better because I think it looked more like that shell uh, when you're dragging it through. Because these things are bottom feeders and they will, uh, they will come up and knock the fire out of them. I'm uh, paying attention to the way he's threading that on the hook and it's just the way that uh, Papa taught me to run a worm on a hook bluegill fishing. That's it. That's how my dad showed me. To, to put those worms on there. Get it. There you go. That's money. Oh, did I miss him? There, there you oh. go. There you go. Oh, baby. There you go. There we go. Who? Oh my God. Now that's a shell crocker there. That right there is a way to start a TV show right there. That is a doggone shell crocker. Now that's a stud. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it going. Now that's a stud. That now, is awesome right there. And look at the mouth on that thing. I mean, that's just impressive. I mean, that right there is impressive there's my thumbnail beside it i mean those are the ones you can actually grab on to what is that close to 12 inches yep pretty close to 12 inch shell cracker right there right off the bat yep. sun's rising the fog is rolling and we catching fish that's how it's done that's why i didn't have my net out and i thought i was gonna have to net that one no nah, when they hit they hit they hold these jokers hold pretty good well see uh this hook and this setup that's on her right now, it's probably got four, 400 bluegill already that's on okay. it. okay. You might <laughs> get 40 shell crockers on there today. That they would not choke it, kill it. They would barely take that, uh, that barber under. Just ease down They'll on ease it the same down. way that a cold water crappie would with a barber. Yes. Just grab it and just ease down just a little bit. Ease it down, yep. Because on live scope, oh no. Oh no, got me a green carp. Yep. For those who can't see this fish, is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? He got that on film. Now, I set this down there for a reason. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I set it down there for a reason. For <laughs> some reason, these shell crackers are roamers. Okay. And for whatever reason with the boat, they will go under your boat. We have caught dozens of shell crackers just dropping the bait right over the boat. Just right over the boat. Just, just over. right over the boat. You would know a bluegill when you see him. A bluegill is a smaller profile and he is, uh-oh, I uh -oh. hear some drag. Uh-oh. I hear some drag. What have I got? Is that a red ear or is that a catfish? That's a red ear. Oh, oh stud, baby. Stud. That's oh, my God, Kevin. That's a red ear. I thought. That big old male. Oh, 
Hello, Bill Dance moment. That went out. <laughs> oh, that hurt my neck. That hurt my leg. Oh my God. He swallowed that thing. Dude. Look, what a red ear. I think I broke my big toenail. That's okay. <laughs> I mean, that hurt. I think that's going to make up for it. That'll yes, ease sir. the pain. That will ease the pain right there. That is just a giant. That's a stud. Oh my goodness. And you can find these anywhere. Anybody could go out, to be honest, and replicate this and find these shell crackers. Uh, I normally look for a muddy bank where there's a drop uh, structure. Okay. Uh, you know, I look for water about six feet deep. And then if there's a drop and it doesn't matter if it goes oh. to 20 feet, 15 feet, it really doesn't matter because they'll be on the side of they'll, that drop. They'll just be on the side. They'll right? be on the side. Now, these move pretty quick on they there? They move pretty quick. Yes. Okay. But they just so much bigger. And you can tell when we get up on this next stump, you will be able to actually see them. Okay, so we're going to get some screen footage. We're going to get some screen footage of them chasing your bait. Okay. Yes. yes. On the Hook is presented by Ozark Rods, Cornfield Fishing, Crappie Monster, Power Pole, Easy Drift, and Red Gold. I think last year, I think we came probably four days in a row. Yeah. And we double limit each day. But we were just fishing out in the middle, out in the open, you know. Bald eagle. Yeah, that means you're going to have some good luck. Hmm. Oh, hey, 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 it wasn't mm -hmm. a line. That's another bluegill. You know, one of the first things that I do with these long shank hooks like this, mm -hmm. when I first take them and tie them on, and you put a bead I in. put a bow in it. I put just a little bit of a bow in that hook. I bend it out like this. That tends to help me get more hook sets when I'm bluegilling. Uh-oh. Oh, uh oh, oh, uh oh, uh oh, boys. We got trouble in paradise. Oh my goodness. It's trouble it's, in paradise. It's pinwheeling. Oh, get off my trolling motor. You're going to have to figure him out. Oh, oh no. Pull that trolling motor up. Yep. Let him come up with the trolling. Is he still there? You got it. Oh <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is a tank. I mean, an absolute giant. Right around trolling motor and everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I wonder if it's the current coming in here that pushes them up on top of this. See, I can't even pinpoint it yet. I haven't figured that part out. We, we have a scientific investigation going down <laughs> on the hook today. <laughs> Uh oh, and that's the result. And this here is what you call a head shaker here, guys. Uh oh. Just a beautiful fish. Oh my gosh. I mean, just a beautiful fish. And this is a tank. Yeah. This is a tank. And it's just, I don't know what it is with this drop shot. I think personally, I think when this weight come across that bottom and it makes contact, if there is a fish in its path, I think it spooks that fish a little bit. Stirs him up. It stirs him up and then he'll see that. And I guess his instinct kick in. Attack. Let me go get it. Yeah. But he just don't know. It's something on the end of waiting on him. So we've got a... Quarter ounce, just a, a, a teardrop sinker, yep. bell sinker, whatever you want to call yep. it. Uh, maybe 18 to 20 inches below your hook. And you just did a couple loop knots off the side to get a little leader for the hook. Just to get a little leader. Just so to hold it barely off the line. To hold it off the line. And look, I got something right here, Jeremy. That ain't what we want there, but. <laughs> that ain't what we want there. But, so you're just dragging it, and when you drag it across that bottom, 
it's holding this bait up above. It's holding that bait up above. And, and then if you pop it, it gives your bait some action as you're reeling it in. Yes. Oh, boy. Nice. Oh. <laughs> now that is a giant. It don't get no better than this. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you. You saying oh. oh, yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. Come on, baby, I said. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, they sir. They are following that bait. And you seen him come up and hit that. I was able to, I watched him. I was able to commentate, see the whole thing unfold. Uh, the stump is over there, mm -hmm. 20 feet, but these fish had followed Kevin's bait and they're just running all up and down this bank. Uh, we're in three foot of water. Water temp is 67 degrees and they're just spread out all through here. There's a lot congregated on the timber, but there's a whole bunch of them roaming open water. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh -oh. we uh -oh. pinwheeling. Uh-oh. <laughs> the fight is unreal. We the got, way these fish fight is insane. We got live action. Yes, and sir. And you can see they trailed all the way to the, right at the yeah, trail Yeah, I, I can see 30 on the screen right now from three feet to 24 feet out. And the beauty of it is the stump is still way out here in front of us. They're just following the trail, the scent of that worm, and it's dragging them out. And well, his scent trail is how I caught my last fish. I pitched in on the fish that was following. And I'm telling you, these are some beautiful fish. These are beautiful. It don't get no better than this. It, no, no, I mean, uh, it, it's cold. I broke my toenail <laughs> and I'm still smiling because this is awesome. On the Hook is presented by Ozark Rods, Crappie Monster, Still Lake Marine, and Rockport Rattler. Uh, my name is Kevin Bean. I'm from Clarksville, Tennessee, born and raised in Forest City, Arkansas. Fishing to me, uh, growing up, it was a lifestyle, uh, but now, it is therapy. Uh, I get on that water, man, and I don't worry about nothing. Any issue somebody might have when they get on the water, though for me, I don't have no issues. And I love to get out there and feel that thump, whether it's crappie fishing or shell crocker fishing. To me, a shell crocker is, it looks like a cross between a uh, crappie and a bluegill, but it's not. It's in the uh, panfish family. Uh, shell crockers is this big blue gill on steroids. That's what they are. They are just so massive across the back. And in my opinion, they are the hardest fighting fish, pound for pound, you can go and catch. We got it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what a fish! This is a home. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I was looking for your bait on there. Uh-uh. You said you got one at 10. There you go. <laughs> there he goes. There he goes. That's a good one, Jerry. Yes, sir. Now, that's a stud, too. I mean, just a stud. Should have about nine or ten, eight say, or nine. How about eleven? <sighs> this right here is your typical red ear. We're looking at seven inches or so, eight yeah. inches. That's your typical red ear. Yep. The ones that Kevin has put us on here today are like stuff that you get trophy angler awards over. One of those fish. And how many you put us on so far? Ten. You got ten so far. Now, if you didn't have electronics and you come through an uh, area and like we did this morning, we threw on a stick, uh, caught a red ear, 
Well then, if you don't have electronics, that's fine. Just start fan casting out across the, the flat going into the channel. And these are roamers. I didn't know that Red Air did this. They are cruising the bottom of the flat right here going into the channel. And they're just all over the place. So maybe that's why we wasn't catching them because we would catch one and think, oh, that's it, and not fish all the water out around it. Yes. Uh-oh, uh-oh. You got a problem. We got a problem. And it's a good one to have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you got, Kevin B? I got a toad. You got a toad? I got a toad. I got oh, a toad. Oh my goodness, what a fish. That is just unreal, man. Let me get over in the spot. Go ahead. That one off. <laughs> I mean, where else? I mean, you just can't find them like this anywhere uh, this time of year. These are just some studs, man. Oh, 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 oh my uh -oh. goodness. Get in, uh -oh. this, get in this boat, Bubba. Doubling up on giant shell crackers. On the Hook is presented by Ozark Rods, Cornfield Fishing, Crappie Monster, Power Pole, Easy Drift, and Red Gold. Kevin, I don't, I haven't even saw this many red ear on a bed during the spawn. I don't know why they congregate. I have, I just think they feed and personally. Something about maybe the shells themselves, uh, the, the clams in here? That's what I've said all along is it's got to be that shell bed that's running through here uh, because we catch those shells from time to time. I had an older gentleman tell me, he said, you want to look for a, uh, a muddy bank. And if you could find a muddy bank, about six feet of water, he said, you could find shell crackers. There you go. Ooh. Uh, Stung him. And... I'm going to be honest, that, I mean, he was telling the truth. He was just dead honest. Yeah, and you can see, that's just mud right it's there just, on bank. It's just mud. It's just mud. And some of them, it's just a ledge. When you can find them just on a ledge like this, and they sitting down in that deeper water, man, it's fun when you're coming up the side of that ledge. That's a big old female. In the bluegill, the females will be more of a silver, silver, not have near as much color to them as what the males do. Like, uh, I know this is a different species, but it's the same principle. Kevin Beans right there, that's a male fish, and he's got a lot of color to him. The females, even in the shell crackers, they'll have that silverish tint to them. It, it'll be like there's not near as much color. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of weird. Uh, and when it comes to fish, it's, it's the boys that's got the makeup on. Right. Yeah, I didn't. Good stab. Good shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a hammer. <laughs> That's a hammer. Boom, baby. That's a hammer. We haven't been having to net these fish because they're biting like they actually mean it. We're getting the hook set right here in the hard part of the cartilage on top of their nose. Now, if they were a light biting, we would have to net these fish or they would come off. But they are turned flat on and we're having a ball and we are just flipping them. Oh, good shot. There we go. Good shot. Good shot. <laughs> oh, I love this stuff right here, man. Man, this has been one heck of a morning. Yes. Dude, thank you so much. Anytime. This is this is uh 
This is probably one of the best things anybody's ever done in crappie fishing for me, is bringing me out here and showing me something like this that I didn't know. The, the sheer knowledge that I've been able to gain this morning, it's gonna keep me on this lake for the next two months trying to figure out just exactly where else we can replicate this at. I think you can do that on any uh, flat uh, channel, uh, ledge especially, when you got shallow and it drops deep and yeah. you come up that side of that ledge, they usually hammers. They absolutely was. Guys, how about that? Red ears, October, Kevin Bean, they on the hook. And the best part is, we ain't done because we coming right back next week. You can join us right here at the same time, same channel for another great episode while we go out and we find them and we put them on the hook. Home to my house. Grab a cooler and some ice cold beer. Good old shirt, and I'm out of here. Call my buddies to meet me down by the water. Unload the boat, turn the key, turn up the dial, and set me free. I need a lane.